torture for me now. I'm like, oh my God, we're about to land. I got to hurry up. <laughs> so it would really be a bummer if that does take effect. And I was worried about that once they announced it for, um, you know, the Middle Eastern and North Africa. But And now they're talking about maybe Europe, but I haven't heard about this one. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. Well, how the hell are you, everybody? Hey, allies. Um, got my 2P3 radio behind me here. I wanted to talk to you about it. Uh, but before that, I want to catch you up to what's happened in the last couple of weeks. I got back from uh, Colorado Springs on Saturday. Uh, last week, this is Sunday that I'm talking to you. Sunday the, the what is this, the 12th? 14th? It's the 14th, right? Because it's Mother's Day. Yeah, it's Mother's Day. Um... I got back uh, last Saturday and uh, was welcomed home uh, to two sick kids and a sick wife. And Tuesday I ended up staying home from work to watch one of the kids. I got sick and I've been out of work since. I This is bad. Um, this is the tail end of it. I'm, I'm doing pretty well, but wow. Uh, anyway, on Tuesday I put Edison to, uh, to sleep, gave him a little nap, and I put together almost all of this Texan... 2P3 AM radio, and you can uh, you can go check out a link to that if you're interested. I'll post it uh, in the cards. You can check it out. Uh, it's a it's a really nice kit. It's a it's a very interesting kit because it doesn't give you any instruction on how to put it together. It just gives you the exploded um, uh, circuit diagrams. It gives you a, a picture of all the parts placed, color coded, and it, it's actually very doable because the uh, board on the back here. When I open this up, you'll see there's uh, numbers associated to it, and all the parts are numbered uh, to where they go. So it's actually very easy to, to, to do the kit. You just start at the top and work your way down. Now, um, unlike other kits, now I haven't done a whole lot of kits. You saw I did that 40, um, 40 meter receiver. I've done some other stuff. There's a bit of tweaking that has to be done with this kit. When you get to the end, um, there's actually three points on the board that are, are broken and they're disjointed and you actually have to go in and, and solder bridge the gaps. The reason for that is it's a, it's a power check, it's a, it's a diagnostic check. You go in there with your two probes on your multimeter and you read out the power. And if the power is within a certain range, you're good to go. If it's too low or it's too high, you actually have to desolder a resistor and replace it with another resistor. Uh, in my case, I had to replace the first resistor that, uh, that I encountered. So. This is a kit for a more experienced individual. I would say this is an intermediate kit. With that said, um, I was able to put this together in about two hours on the live stream. I had almost all the parts done. Um, the testing and analysis, that took another uh, two hours. Once I had that done, once I figured out how it all goes into the case correctly and nicely, um, with that said, I love the case design. It's got a very Chinese look to it. And um, if you can see this, the logo on it is a little uh, SKS rifle. And that's a double-sided, uh, looks like an SKS. Maybe it's not. No, I guess it's not. Uh, anyway, it's a double-sided logo, and you can switch it back and forth to whatever you choose. So that's talking about the kit. I wanted to cover that first because um, this is a kit radio. If you're interested in making this, you're interested in making kits, with that said, it's highly recommended. The AM quality on this radio is amazing. It's really good. And by comparison, this is a $20 kit radio. This is my uh, Texan PL660, which is my go-to almost all band uh, radio. Um, this does AM, FM, obviously. It does air and it does uh, SW, shortwave. And it has pretty much all the bands on shortwave. It'll pick up pirate radio stations, which I have. It'll pick up number stations, which I have. Um, great radio. Um, as a comparison, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on the same station and I'm going to let you guys hear the difference between the two because uh, this 2P3 is really good. Um, I would actually, there's a term called DXing. DXing is where you go for really long, you try and receive really long AM stations. This is best done at night. And this radio is a DX performer. The only problem you're gonna have uh, with the operation of this radio is the is the dials. The dials um, are a minute movement. You have to be very, very precise with your movements. And, and you'll get a lot of movement out of them because the wheels are so small given the uh, potentiometers that you're manipulating. 
All in all, it's a very, very cool radio. I'm very happy with it. It takes two AA batteries. Uh, that's probably the worst part about the kit, um, just to do a quality discussion point on the kit, and I really gotta open it up to show you. Uh, but there are the, the, pa the, the little holder, the battery holder they used is really soft plastic and it deforms and it actually gets in the way of the back, the backing here. And so you got to make sure when you're screwing it back together that you put the whole thing together right and then you torque it down enough. But you don't want to torque it down too much that you crack the plastic. So yeah, keep that in mind. Let's take a look at this up close. So a couple things to keep in mind is nothing is pre-soldered here. So the breadboard or the perf board is completely barren when you get it. So keep that in mind. All the parts must be soldered. Uh, in place. City limits. We're just, you know, Highway 138. People yeah. go through there on their way to Vegas. I know exactly. Five. I thought we were a little disappointing. I like the S6. The S7 was nice. So much like shortwave, AM is best suited for evening. If you really want to do some DXing, you really want to pull in some really far away stations, it's best to try and do that in the evening time. I recorded this a little before noon, and uh, you can tell only the big booming local stations are making it through. But those big booming local stations sound wonderful. Sure, there's a bit of tuning that needs to be done still, and I'm, I'm going to go in there and do a little fine tuning work, but that is a a time intensive process it's a enjoyable process you can take your time with it but the radio works great it's it's very awesome so here's a side by side comparison of the am capability of the texan peel 660 to the 2p3 and note 2p3 has had very little fine tuning work just batteries in works out of the box i use hotmail okay there you go they use hotmail well that might explain it uh hotmail is a microsoft service and they've replaced it with Outlook now. Off. You know, they stopped, maybe stopped using those settings. So, um, when you first set up your phone, you may not even remember this, it was so long ago. You put in the settings for your email. So I believe that high-pitched whine I can get rid of completely with a bit of fine-tuning. So keep that in mind, uh, most of all this stuff can just get sorted out uh, via the tuning process. And just for the sake of argument, here's a size comparison. You can see that the, obviously the 2P3 is much smaller. Understand the PL660 is a um, digital radio, a software-defined radio, so you're going to get way more functionality at a much smaller size than a larger uh, analog, but for an analog radio, only doing AM, the 2P3 is a great size. So by and large, the 2P3 radio for $20 is really hard to beat, and it's a lot of fun to build. A bit of a challenge at the end when you're doing the testing of the circuitry, you're going to have to know exactly what you're doing, and um, I actually recommend the Amazon review for this radio. If you go to it, there's a poster. did a really, really good job of walking through how to do those last three steps because it's not covered very well in the instructions. Uh, if you decide to get this radio and, uh, and you do go to the Amazon review and it's not helpful, um, you can send me a, a comment on Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, Facebook's a lot easier for me. I, I get them a lot faster than the YouTube. Uh, personal messages don't work that well. But you feel free to, to message me there because um, um, it is actually a little bit difficult. And it's a little bit counterintuitive, and you're going to need a multimeter, so make sure you have a multimeter. And I would recommend one that's around the $50 range and up. Uh, yeah. I, I totally recommend this. If you're interested in a challenge and you and you do like building kits and you're familiar with radio technology, then you'll like this. Um, man, yeah, cool. This is going to be my, my actual go-to radio now. I'm going to take this with me uh, most places because I listen to AM more than I listen to just about any other um, other than shortwave radio station. I don't listen to FM, I don't listen to air, um, I listen to scanners now and then, but that's more of a, a different thing. But when I'm at work, I like to have AM talk radio going in the background, and particularly that station you're listening to, 640. Is it 640? Hmm. KFI. <laughs> anyway. To give a bit of an update, since we're talking about radios, uh, here is the prototyped FM bug transmitter that we've been talking about building on our next Let's Build. Yeah. So, uh, the components, I don't have this working perfectly yet, that little red guy right there, the uh, adjustable capacitor, 
uh, is it, it was recovered from a, uh, a radio and it's not working correctly. So I'm waiting for more parts to come. If you're interested in doing this, uh, there will be a link in the description so you can go and actually buy the parts. There's actually not a lot of parts to it. It's very inexpensive to build. I would recommend if you're going to go down the route of, of buying this, that you buy at least two sets of parts, all the components, two sets, and get yourself a breadboard. The reason is you're going to want to prototype this and make sure that it works before you actually just go live into, into soldering it all together. The breadboard and the component portion, the prototyping, is very important because you're not permanently damaging anything or you're not putting solder on anything, you're not cutting leads, you're not doing any, anything other than just, um, just, just making sure it works. So I highly recommend you get the parts for that. Um, I'm, I'm targeting next Friday or this coming Friday to, to do this build. And hopefully the parts come in that I need because I needed to swap out that, that variable. Anyway, yeah, that'll do it, guys. We're going to be back to somewhat of a regular schedule next week. We'll have a mukbang somewhere in the week. I'd like to do it on a weekday or a weekend because those are always the best. But um, if I'm going to do the let's build on Friday, then we might just want to stick to a regular Tuesday mukbang. Tuesday for us, Wednesday for you. Uh, that will do it. Again, thanks for thanks for watching. Thanks for I appreciate all your comments. If you post those below, that'd be great. Give me something to respond to and do. And uh, and yeah, we'll talk to you later. See ya.